a very warm welcome to the video lecture series in history class 12th. Today we will continue with our discussion about fifth chapter which deals with through the eyes of travelers. In this chapter we will deal with four subtopics, two we have already discussed those are Al Biruni the Asian traveler, Ibn Battuta the traveler from Africa, rest two are Francois Bernier the European traveler and various travelers and their accounts. In this session we will discuss about Francois Bernier the European traveler. Francois Bernier the European traveler gives information about Francois Bernier comparing Mughal India that is East with contemporary Europe that is West in his travel account travels in the Mughal empire. Understanding contemporary rural Indian society through Bernier's account and its verification from Mughal official documents. Influence of Bernier on Montesquieu and Karl Marx, Bernier contradicts himself about Indian urban centers as per Bernier's account and practice of sati and status of women in Indian society. Between 10th to 17th century, it was not unusual that people from different parts of the world, they traveled to new lands driven by a sense of adventure or as traders, merchants, soldiers, priests in search of work or to escape from natural disasters. Those who visited new lands, they saw totally different world in terms of physical environment as well as social customs, languages, beliefs and practices of people. One such traveler was Francois Bernier who came from France which is a European country. He came to India in 17th century. About Francois Bernier, like other European travelers as Barbosa from Portugal, French dweller Tavernier, Italian doctor Manuki, Bernier was a French man who came to Mughal empire in search of opportunities. He was a doctor, political philosopher and historian. He stayed in India for 12 years and was very closely associated with the Mughal court as a physician to Prince Darashuko. Darashiko was the eldest son of Emperor Shahaja and later on he was associated as an intellectual and scientist with Danishman Khan who was a noble at the Mughal court. Comparing Mughal India that is East with contemporary Europe West in his travel account travels in the Mughal empire. Bernier he travelled to several parts of India and wrote his account on the model of binary opposition, where he represented India as far more inferior to the West, particularly France. Maybe his aim was to convey to policy makers and intelligentsia in Europe that whatever political arrangements they made in Europe was right and appropriate. He dedicated his major writings to Louis XIV, the king of France. His assessment about India was not always accurate and motivated with single aim to show India inferior than Europe. Still, his writings became very popular in Europe. His works reached masses in Europe due to printing which is in contrast to the works in Arabic and Persian languages which were generally not published before 1800 
and were in circulation as manuscripts. Manuscripts means which were handwritten. Understanding contemporary rural Indian society through Bernier's account. Bernier's account of contemporary rural Indian society, it confuses historians rather than helping them in reconstructing its history. He presents certain situations which seem to be far away from reality. On the other hand, he presents some reality also. For example, according to Bernier, Mughal emperor owned all the lands and distributed it among his nobles and this had disastrous effect on the economy and society of Mughal empire. Whereas in Europe, the land had private owners. Secondly, since land belonged to the emperor, so landholders could not pass on their land to their children. So, landholders were not interested in long term investments and expansion of production. This prevented the emergence of the class of improving landlords, which happened in Europe due to private property. This is according to Bernier. Now, there was no improving landlords who had a desire to maintain or improve this land in Mughal Empire. So, in India happened a continuous destruction of agriculture, exploitation of peasants and decline in living standards of all sections of society except the ruling class. According to Bernier, Indian society is a mass of impoverished people in control of a small minority of a very rich and powerful ruling class. There is no middle class in India according to Bernier. So, he perceived Mughal empire as an empire whose king was the king of beggars and barbarians, whose cities and towns were ruined, contaminated with ill air and its fields overspread with bushes and marshy lands. And who is responsible for such bad state? According to Bernier, this is all because of crown ownership of land. And he wants that if European kings, they followed this Mughal model, then their kingdoms will no more be so rich, flourishing and well cultivated. Rather, it will turn into deserts and ruins full of beggars and barbarians like in India, according to Bernier. So, he wants to prove that West is far more superior than East and for this, he oversimplified the land ownership in India. Now, verification of Bernier's description from Mughal official documents. Nowhere Nowhere in Mughal official documents state claims its sole ownership over land. Abul Fazal, the 16th century official chronicle of Akbar's reign, he describes the land revenue as remuneration of sovereignty. Now, this is a claim made by the ruler on his subjects for the protection he provided rather than as rent. This tax was neither rent nor land tax, but it was a tax on the crop. Now, Bernier's picture of Indian rural society was far from reality then. In fact, during the 16th and 17th centuries, Rural society was characterized by social and economic differentiation. At one end were the big zamindars who enjoyed superior rights over land and at the other end were the untouchable landless laborers. In between were big peasants who used hired labor 
and engaged in commodity production and the smaller peasants who could hardly produce for their subsistence. Influence of Bernier on thinkers like Montesquieu and Karl Marx. From the 18th century onwards, the western theorist, they got influenced by Bernier's description of East, for example, French philosopher Montesquieu. He developed his theory of oriental despotism. Orient means East and oriental despotism means where all land belonged to king. No private property existed. Kings, they enjoyed absolute power over their subjects. Except the king and his nobles, rest of the people barely managed to survive. And Karl Marx, he gave concept of Asiatic mode of production. This was again influenced by Bernier's description. And in this Asiatic mode of production, Karl Marx says that before colonialism, surplus was appropriated by the state. So, there emerged an autonomous and egalitarian village community whose autonomy was respected by the state till, till the flow of surplus was not disturbed. And this was a stagnant system. Now we see Bernier, he contradicts himself. On one hand, Bernier says that the empire of Hindustan had barren mountains, badly cultivated, thinly populated, laborers treated badly by governors. And when poor people, they become incapable of fulfilling the demands of their lords, then these poor people are deprived of the means of subsistence and their children, they are carried away as slaves. The artisans, they had no incentive to improve the quality of their manufactures. Why? Since profits were taken away by the state. Now, Bernier contradicts himself. How? By saying that a large portion of the empire is extremely fertile. Bengal surpasses Egypt in the production of rice, corn, silks, cotton, indigo. And in many parts of the Indies, population is abundant, land is well tilled, according to Bernier. Artisans, they manufacture carpets, brocades, embroideries, gold and silver clothes, various sorts of silk and cotton goods, which are not only used in the country, but also exported abroad. Rich merchant community exist in India. He is perhaps the only historian who provides a detailed account of the working of the royal workshop, where many artisans are employed and earn their livelihood. Bernier says that gold and silver, after circulating throughout the globe, come at length and get swallowed in Hindustan. So, how is it possible that goods manufactured in India, they were highly in demand in the world. Land was so fertile, but still there was no incentive for growth and everything in decline in India. So, Bernier contradicts himself. Now, Indian urban centers as per Bernier's account. Bernier, he described Mughal cities as camp towns, which existed and survived till the imperial camp stayed there and declined as the imperial court moved out. So, they had weak social and economic foundations dependent on imperial patronage. Now, he contradicts himself once again by stating that urban population in India was higher than in Western Europe in 17th century. Now, if social and economic foundation of urban centers will be weak, 
then majority of the population will reside in rural areas, not in urban areas. So, he contradicts himself once again. If social and economic foundations of urban centers will be weak, then majority of the population will reside in rural areas, not in urban areas. Above it, there were all kinds of towns, manufacturing towns, trading towns, port towns, sacred centers, pilgrimage towns, etcetera, etcetera. This indicates existence of rich merchant communities and professional classes. Merchants in urban centers, they were organized into their own caste come occupational bodies. Other urban groups included professional classes as physicians known as Hakims or Vaidya, teachers known as Pandit or Mullah, Vakil or lawyers, painters, architects, musicians, etc. Some were dependent on royal patronage, they earned their living by serving their patrons, while still others they served ordinary people in the markets or bazaars. So, here again Bernier was drawing an oversimplified picture of Indian urban centers despite the variety of nature. Practice of Sati and status of women in Indian society. Practice of Sati was a cruel custom in which widow was forced to burn herself alive on the pyre along with dead body of husband. Bernier has given a heart touching description of the child Sati in his travels in the Mughal Empire. Not surprisingly, Bernier chose this practice of Sati as a marker of difference in the treatment of women in western and eastern society, again to show superiority of west over east. However, women's lives revolved around many other things besides the practice of Sati. They actually participated in agricultural and non-agricultural production. At times, they took mercantile disputes to the court of law. It seems unlikely that women were confined to the private spaces of their homes. So, in this we discussed about François Bernier comparing Mughal India or East with contemporary Europe that is West in Bernier's travel account travels in the Mughal Empire. Understanding contemporary rural Indian society through Bernier's account and its verification from Mughal official documents. Influence of Bernier on Montesquieu and Karl Marx and Bernier contradicts himself. About Indian urban centers as per Bernier's account, practice of Sati and status of women in Indian society. In our next episode, we will discuss about the last subtopic of this chapter that is various travelers and their accounts. Thank you. Thank you.